verses 3 through 9. And say thank you to Sandy and, and the choir for helping us um, to worship through a song this morning. Say thank you to Eddie Price and his family also for, for helping us to focus our hearts on the resurrection and the hope of a, of a homecoming. The hope of a, of a real homecoming uh, in heaven. For those of you who, who I've never met, I am uh, Adam. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm the pastor of discipleship and care. I've been here for uh, a little over two months. Um, it's, it's been a, a pleasure and uh, look forward to meeting uh, you throughout the day. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, let's let's take a look at the Word of God in First Peter, chapter one, starting in verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to His great mercy, has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the re resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled, and will not fade away. Reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. So that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Will you pray with me? Father, we come to you Grateful, humble, glad, and joyous that we can call out to you and you hear us. Thankful that you have called us to yourself through your son. And that you have saved us and set us free from our sins. Thankful, Father, that we have the hope of the resurrection. Thankful that one day we will see the King of Kings in all of his glory. So Father, today is just a taste of that. As we celebrate what you have done here, what you are doing, we long and look forward to the day that is coming. When you come to take us to our rightful home. Father, for your glory, to make Christ's name known through the power of your spirit, I pray that you will move in this service. I pray that you will take your word and implant it in our hearts. Father, I pray that you will be with us now. Help us to hear and receive your word. Help me to faithfully passionately preach it give me the the spirit's power now for it's in christ's name i pray amen on february 2015 on the beaches of libya 21 christians were beheaded for their faith the offense given to them was that they were people of the cross. These, these Egyptian Christians had been persecuted for their faith. They were ultimately killed because of who they confessed as Lord. In their confession of Christ, in front of their captors, believing in the great hope that they had, in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You think of the great apostles. The one we're reading after today, Peter. Paul. The other 11 disciples. As they're starting the church and leading it forward. Persecuted. Facing opposition. And in the midst of that opposition, holding fast to the hope that they had in the resurrection of Jesus. Many of those would be put to death, beheaded, some hung upside down on a cross for their faith. The church then faced opposition. The church now continues to face opposition and persecution for its faith. I was reading that the church in China that has been underground for many years is now facing new sanctions and new persecutions from the, from the Chinese government. In Nigeria, the terrorist group Boko Haram is harassing continuously the Christian people there in that nation and throughout that region of Africa. But in all of this persecution and all of this opposition and all of this suffering, these people do not lose hope in the Lord, in their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I would say to you today, as the people of God, we have this great hope. The hope that we have is that we've been born again to a new life. So for the next few moments, I want to speak to you about being born again to a living hope. A living hope. This is nothing that is dead. Our hope is living. And it's living because of the resurrection of Christ. A living hope in the resurrection of Christ. Look at verse, at verse 3. Peter starts this section of the letter. By reminding us of our great God. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter, he can't start the letter without saying, without giving praise and thanks and rejoicing in God. May that be said of the people of God. That at every waking moment, we remember who God is and we give him the praise that, is, that he has deserved. Blessed be the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through what? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You see, the hope we have is sure and steady. The hope that we have is not in, in humanity. It's not in governments. It, it, it is not in the works of our hands. It is in the risen Christ. And, Paul, and Peter here, doing his best to remind us of that. He says, remember this mercy that God has shown towards us. That while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Remember that we were dead, once dead in our transgressions and sins. And it was only through the work of Christ that we could be made alive. That the sin that, that separated us from God could be, could be forgiven and pardoned. So Peter calls us, he calls, he calls his readers to remember that God has been so gracious and merciful to us. And so on this day of homecoming, let us be, let us be remindful, let us be mindful of the God who has extended his mercy to us. What we deserve was a punishment for our sins. But God looked to another one. He looked to his son and he gave his son the punishment we deserved. In Christ, we have been born again. We have been given a new life, made new creatures, new creations. Again, not the works of our own hands. But through God, by God, through his son, making us alive, giving us a new walk, a new heart, 
setting us right with him, giving us a new relationship, giving us this new hope. So our hope is built on the firm foundation of Christ and his resurrection. He says, you have been born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead. And so what he's saying, what he's saying to us is that, remember, Christ was put to death. He hung on a cross. He was taken off the cross. He was put in the grave. The grave was sealed up. Three days later, the the stone is rolled away. Christ is raised from the dead. And in his resurrection, those who die in Christ will be raised to life. So there is hope that we have. (laughs) The hope that we have that we too in Christ will raise from the dead, that death, that death has no hold of us, that sin no longer has a hold of us because of Christ and what he has done. And so he has put sin to death, and one day when he returns, sin finally, fully defeated. Satan finally and fully defeated. Death, hell, the grave, finally defeated and it is through this resurrection of the dead this resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead that we have this great hope so be reminded today be reminded today that there is a there's a life and a home that's coming to us that's far greater than we could ever imagine And we have this hope of that home through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And he says that this living hope we have is in the resurrection. He also says that this living hope we have has an inheritance. Look with me at verses 4 and 5. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Peter is telling these people, he's telling us, you have a hope in the resurrection, and this hope comes with an inheritance. Listen to what he says in Romans chapter 8. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may be glorified in him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. You see, the children of God have this hope, this promise of an inheritance. He also says, over in Ephesians chapter 1, he says these words, And what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion in every name that is named, not only in the age to come, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all. You see, in Christ we share this inheritance. The inheritance, he says, is imperishable, which means nothing can extinguish it. Nothing can ruin this inheritance. You see, my grandpa, when he passed away, he left the family some things. He left the house to, to one, of the, one of the family members. He left his truck to me. And the truck's old. The truck's got a lot of miles on it. And you see, it's good, but this truck will, it will fade away at, at some point. The house will fall down at some point. But know that the inheritance that we get through Jesus Christ and the inheritance that we share in him will never fade away. It will never be extinguished. 
It is imperishable. It is undefiled. It cannot be cheapened. It cannot be uh, stained. It will never grow old. This inheritance that we have, this inheritance that we have is eternal. And let me say to you that the inheritance that we have, we're enjoying it now, but we will enjoy it fully in heaven. This inheritance will never disappoint you. So what is this inheritance that we're talking about? Verse 5, he says the words salvation. Who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You see, we are saved through faith in Christ. Our salvation awaits completion at the return of Christ. But in that waiting, there is the promise of the salvation that we have now, that God is powerful in protecting our salvation. There's hope in knowing that God is the one guarding and keeping us till the return of Christ. Notice what he says at the beginning of verse 5. You who are protected... By the power of God. This word protected can also mean keep or kept. It is for you military people. It's a military term that means guarded or shielded. And so what, it, what we can take from this and know is that God, by His power, and we know that God is more powerful than any, God, by His power, is keeping and guarding us until the day that our salvation has been completed, until that day that Christ returns again. And so we can know, we can know and understand that God is constantly on guard. He never sleeps. He never goes off guard duty. God always guarding and protecting His children. There is a security in knowing that. He's always assuring us that we shall safely arrive to our home. That we will safely arrive to the place called heaven. Our, our faith, as Warren Wiersbe says, our faith in Christ has so united us to him that his power now, now guards us and it guides us. It guides us through and it guards us through the sufferings that we face. So I ask you, how long will he guard us? How long will he guard us? He will guard us until we are at our final rest. He will guard us until Christ returns to take us home. So know this. You family of believers, that in Christ we have a living hope through the resurrection. In Christ we share an inheritance. In Christ we have a living hope that, and that we can joyfully live and walk in the middle of suffering. A living hope that joyfully takes us through suffering. Look at verses 6 through 7. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. So that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in the praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. He starts off in verse 6 saying, In this you greatly rejoice. What are we rejoicing in? We go back to verse 5. We're rejoicing in that salvation. We're rejoicing in that salvation. You see, those outside the church do not know this joy. They do not know this hope. You and I know this hope. So of all people, we are to be the most joyous and rejoicing people. Why? 
because we know this great salvation. Remember, this is a salvation that in Christ he has taken us from death to life. He has bridged the gap of separation that we had with God. So take great joy in salvation. And when you walk through these trials that you face, and we all walk through them, when you walk through the pain of life, when you walk through the sufferings of life, remember that you are not walking alone. Remember that you have this great salvation. Remember that this life is, is brief in comparison to the hope that's to come, in comparison to heaven, in comparison to living a life free from sin, a life in, in, in complete worship with Christ. No more cares of the world, no more sin, all gone. Take hope in that, that this is what salvation, this is the rewards of salvation. Greatly rejoice in the salvation that, that God has given to us through Christ. You see, we'll face trials, some, some trials, as Peter says, are necessary. He says, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. Some trials we go through are needed. Some trials that we face will increase our faith in the Lord. Some trials that we go through, God may be correcting us of a sin. He may be disciplining us as a father disciplines his child. But know in that moment, it's needed and it's necessary and it's brief. Some trials we go through are varied. Various trials that we face. Some trials we go through, honestly, are not going to be easy. We have a family in our church that's going through a trial that is not easy right now. But know this. In all of these trials that we face... In all the sufferings, though God is with us, those 21 people killed for their faith, God was right there in the midst of that. And as they're being beheaded, they declare that Jesus is Lord, knowing that that means a final end, to their, that means an end to their life, but knowing that their faith and their salvation rest in the hands of God. So in these trials... Think back, think back to your salvation, but also look ahead, look ahead, look ahead to what awaits us, look ahead to what awaits us, remember the salvation that you've had, and look to heaven, and long for that place, so in the middle of all of this, We have a hope. We have a hope in the resurrection. We have a hope that comes with an inheritance. We have a hope that we can joyfully walk through the trials and sufferings of life. And we have a hope that's living in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verses 8 and 9. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. So in this, first of all, love Christ. Love Christ. Love Christ and remember that he loves you. Remember what he's done for you. It is in Christ and through Christ that we can face the hardest of days and we can rejoice in them. It is in the best of days that in Christ we can remember 
and be grateful that God is with us. So love Christ. Trust Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, what do you do? You believe in him. You believe in him. Trust him. Trust him that he he is the one who has suffered. He has suffered and he knows the suffering that you're going through. He has faced trials and he knows the trials that you're going through. So he can fully be trusted. So take hope in take hope in that. While we do not see him, we long to see him rejoice in Christ. How many of you have been some, through something very difficult and you know what it's like to face a difficulty and how hard it is to rejoice and be grateful in the middle of that trial? But as I said earlier, Remember who Christ is and what he's done. And in the middle of all of that, rejoice because he's with you. Rejoice because he has saved you. Rejoice because he will see you through that trial. It is a great rejoicing. It is with joy inexpressible and full of glory. It's a living hope that we have in Christ We trust Him, we love Him, we rejoice, and we receive Him. We receive Christ, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. For those of us who know Christ, we have received Him. We have received Him, we've loved Him now, we trust Him now, we rejoice in Him. And so I would say to you, if you have never placed your faith in Christ, do it now. I pray that he will speak to you and and, and, and in coming to him and receiving Christ, he will forgive you of your sin. He will set you free from that sin and you can walk and live in this new life and have this new hope that the rest of us walk in and live in. So will you trust him today? Will you love him today? Will you receive him today? For you are receiving the consummation of your faith that is the final salvation of your souls. One day, one day as Eddie sang, one day he will come again. One day he will come again and he will take his children home to their rightful place. He will take us to experience the inheritance fully. In the meantime, in the meantime, stand firm. Stand firm now in the living hope that we have. The living hope that we have in the resurrection of Christ. We know that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. We're here for a little while. And we long for that day when he comes again. So stand fast in the hope that we have in Christ. And again... If you haven't placed your faith in him, that's the only way to face the uncertainty of tomorrow. That's the only way to face the struggles and the sufferings that you go through in Christ. That is the only way to have your sin forgiven. As we turn to the time of invitation, I want you to remember the hope that we have is sure. This one we have placed hope in, this this Christ that we have placed hope in, has defeated our biggest enemy. He has defeated sin, Satan, hell, death, and the grave. And in him, we can fully trust and love. We can fully live and we can fully face tomorrow. Will you pray with me? Father, you are good. And your word tells us that you have been merciful to us. So, Father, let us greatly rejoice and be glad for what you have done for us. Father, let us be a people who tell others 
about the salvation of our souls. Let us be people who live joyously with this inexpressible joy. Showing those we know, those we love, who you are. Let us walk in this living hope that we have. That we've been born again to a living hope. That we have a new life now in Christ. Let us be people of this new life. Thank you, Father, that you have saved us. Thank you that you have set us free from our sin. Thank you that you have a place prepared for us. Thank you that we have a home. And that one day we are going to that home. God, we wait in our waiting. In our waiting, help us to stand firm and sure on the foundation of the resurrection. I thank you and I praise you for this day. It's in Christ's name. Amen. And Sandy's going to come and lead our invitation. The altar is open for you to come and pray. If Christ is speaking to you, we pray that, that you'll heed the call and receive him today. Stand up.